just wanted to give a quick update on uh, where we stand with the tool head design for uh, the Dux V2 tool changer. So as you can see, in, I have in my hand the almost final version for uh, the tool head. It's um, a self-contained uh, unit with parts cooling and uh, hot and cooling built into it. Uh, I'm using um, a CHC Pro um, hot end from uh, Triangle Labs, but uh, I think you can use uh, Dragon or Rapido, whatever mounts with the four screws on the top uh, with um, the, the tool head design. Um, so there is, uh, these are the locking mechanisms or the locking um, uh, pins on the, on, the front, on the front of the tool head. Uh, as you can see, these are MGN12 rails that have been cut to size. And then um, I'm not sure if you can actually see that, but there is an M3, uh, M63ZZ um, bearing in the, um, in the hole. And then there is an M3 by 16 double pin that actually just passes through it. So there's no drilling involved. The only custom work uh, for uh, the tool head is um, cutting the rail to size and kind of just grinding them to have um, cleaner corners. Then there is an EBB 36 board, uh, tool head board that actually supports pretty much everything on the tool head. There is um, a Hall effect sensor here to um, check for rod docking. And then there is another Hall effect sensor on this side to check for um, the um, attachment to the carriage. Um, these Maxwell coupling pins um, are essentially just M5 button heads with a M3 uh, with a 6x3 magnet uh, glued to the top of it. Um, these allow to constrain motion in the Maxwell coupling and uh, also repeatability as um, you would have seen from the other test uh, that I did a couple of days back. There is uh, a direct drive um, dual gear extruder built into this. And then there is also um, a filament sensor with a filament encoder that actually is built into the tool head. This will allow us to actually detect filament runout as well as filament jams. Um, and the other neat thing about the tool head is the inbuilt Z nozzle probe into the tool head. So if you see, it actually goes back up and comes back in. And then there is an optical sensor built into the tool head that um, works very much like the tap system um, to detect the nozzle Z probe. Um, it can support the opto PCBs, both versions, 5 volt and 24 volts, but I am using uh, a standalone sensor because that is what I had. Um, so I'll be putting this to the test very soon um, and um, get this to print with uh, the final wire management changes that I have uh, discovered while uh, putting this um, tool head together. Um, but I think we're getting close to um, the finalized design. Um, there is going to be an LED carrier that actually comes here. I might actually shift this uh, prong to this side just to keep everything um, on one side. Uh, that might be one of the changes I do uh, for the final version. But there is going to be a status LED uh, per tool head that is going to be integrated into the, um, into the tool itself. Um, then these are the docking pins and um, the dock is um, essentially this piece which actually is glues onto the back, kind of mounts onto the uh, back extrusion. There is some adjustment built into it. Um, and then these are M3 pins for stability and M4, uh, 4 mm um, uh, rods for uh, catching um, the, uh, the slider on the tool changing mechanism. So uh, there are magnets on this side and then there's a hole to capture the, um, the, the tool as it slides in. So if you see, this is how the tool actually slides into the dock. And then the, uh, there's a magnet up top here that actually affects this, that works with the hall effect sensor here uh, to capture uh, if the dock um, has captured the tool correctly or not. 
So yeah, we're getting very close to um, finishing off um, one of the toolets. Um, the reason it's taking some time to actually put um, the final version out there is because I'm I want to validate a sing with a single tool head um, and do all the um, testing um, before I go on to um, build more. Um, the tool head design, as you would have seen, is does not require any custom work in terms of drilling or anything. It's just the uh, cutting the rods and the rails to size that is all that is required. Everything else is pretty much off the shelf. It's a much, much easier build than the Daksh V1 that um, I had. And uh, the tool head itself is also very uh, nicely um, integrated in terms of um, everything that actually needs to be on the tool head is there. So yeah, we'll um, be putting out more updates as uh, this starts along.